We now continue with the second part of the chapter of calorimetry that is change of phase or state and latent heat. Now it has been seen that whenever you have got a particular amount of a body which is to be heated like suppose I take ice okay suppose I take a container filled with ice and this particular container which is filled with ice I start heating it and I put a thermometer inside you find the thermometer will be showing me 0 degree celsius okay and it will keep on I am heating it I am continuously heating it but still the temperature is not going to change at all till the time the whole of the ice does not become water till the time the complete thing and not even a small piece of ice is balanced inside this thing still the thermometer will show me 0 degree celsius so I am keeping on giving up the heat but there is no change in the temperature because the complete heat which is given to that particular body is going to be utilized in the change of state of that particular body. See what is happening. We can see the uh, kinetic uh, model of this particular thing is that when you are going to heat, when you are heating it, first the vibrations will vibrations will increase, then the temperature will increase. But at one time, what happened? The vibrations are not going to be there but the amount of heat is utilized to break the bond break the molecular atomic uh, the, uh, the uh, molecular force of attraction between the two bodies usko break karne mein utilize hota hai. so when it is trying to break that particular bond between the two the break the uh, attract uh, the force of attraction over there at that time there is no increase in the kinetic energy hence there is no increase in the temperature so whatever is the change, whatever is the heat given to the body, that bo that heat is utilized only to change the state of the body. And that's why the amount of heat what we are giving for the change of state is called as the hidden heat or the latent heat. So in case of change of state of, when the change of state of body takes place, at that time the amount of heat energy which is utilized is not going to be utilized for change in temperature at all. There won't be a single rise in temperature at all. The complete thing is going to be taken care by the, uh, will be utilized in the change of state. So that's basically what we are seeing over here that the change of state may heat kabe hoga. But of course we know that the change of state will be basically solid to liquid liquid to gases and gases back to liquid and liquid to solid or in case of sublimation directly solid to gases and gases to solid so I don't think that is something which is going to be required to explain you much so we'll just go through that particular part first and then understand the latent heat there are three states or phases of matter namely solid liquid and gas the same matter can exist in all the three phases under some different conditions of temperature and pressure for example ice solid at 0 degree celsius when heated becomes water liquid at 0 degree celsius so yes we are able to get water as well as ice both at 0 degree celsius okay but water which is at 0 degree celsius will have less amount of heat to be uh, uh, it can absorb less amount of heat whereas ice will have more capacity to absorb the heat because ice will then absorb more amount of heat to convert from ice to water so when we say water when i'm converting this ice into water the temperature was zero so that means ice was also at zero degree celsius and water was also at zero degree celsius so which further our heating changes to steam that is gas at 100 degrees celsius thus at one atmospheric pressure water is found in all the three phases of different and different and different temperatures so that is the process of change of one state of another to another at a constant temperature is called as change of phase it is brought about by the change of heat, exchange of heat so figure 11.2 represents the different process, processes, processes of change of phase that is solid to liquid is melting, liquid to gas is vaporization, gas to liquid is condensation, liquid to solid is freezing, solid directly to gas is sublimation and gas to direct solid is solidification. The change of solid to liquid phase is known as melting while as a change, reverse change from liquid to solid is called as freezing. 
The change from liquid to vapor is known as vaporization, while the reverse change from the gas to liquid is called as condensation or liquefaction. The direct change from the solid to vapor is called as sublimation, and the reverse change from vapor to solid is called as solidification. So, first we see melting and fusion. The change from solid to liquid phase by the absorption of heat at a constant temperature is called melting. Now, most important thing about here, this definition is at constant temperature. We already know that change of state from solid to liquid is melting. That's perfectly fine. But we need to mention over here the most important words that at constant temperature. So the constant temperature at which the solid changes to liquid is called as melting point of the solid. The reverse change from solid to liquid phase, liquid to solid phase with the liberation of heat at a constant temperature is called as freezing or fusion. Okay, so when the liquid changes to solid, it will be called as freezing or called as fusion. And the temperature at which a liquid, liquid freezes to solid is called as freezing point. Thus, heat exchange, heat energy is absorbed during melting and it is rejected during freezing at a constant temperature. So that is what we need to understand that when you are going to be melting any, any particular of a body, then that particular body is going to absorb the heat. So heat is going to be absorbed when it is getting converted from solid to liquid. But when it is getting converted from liquid to solid, at that time heat is being evolved, heat is going to be given out, rejected or given out by the uh, substance. So 0 degree ice to 0 degree water, melting, absorption of heat, whereas 0 degree water to 0 degree ice, liberation of heat, that is freezing. Note, for a pure substance, melting point and freezing points are identical. So you will find that for a pure substance, if I take pure water and pure ice, so it will be seen that water turning to ice and ice turning to water will be the same temperature. In the same temperature, that is at uh, the freezing point and melting point are going to be the same. For a given mass of substance, the amount of heat energy absorbed during melting is the same as the liberated during freezing. Of course, so the amount of energy which is going to be absorbed for melting will be the same amount of energy which will be liberated when it is freezing. Accordingly, we have the heating curve of ice during melting. So, let's see the heating curve. So, if I got this particular kind of a graph which is drawn, in which uh, I have got the uh, temperature which is 0 degree Celsius. So, I have got ice at 0 degree Celsius. And this is given as the time period, time in seconds. And this over here is the temperature. So we have got this as 10, the 10, 20, 30, aise karke raega. and uh, so we will find that initially at 0 degree Celsius, even if the heat was given, the there was no change and that's why the heat which was given for a certain amount of time kept it like this only for maybe around, they are given here at 120 seconds but not not compulsory 120 seconds but for a particular time and only after that it is going to be having an increase in the temperature okay so the increase in temperature will be shown only at a certain time till the time heat is being supplied but the temperature is not increasing so this is the stage where ice over here is converted to water over here okay so zero degree celsius ice to 0 degree Celsius water is what is going to take place in this particular stage that is over here. So to draw a heating curve of ice we perform an experiment as shown as below. So this is the experiment what we have shown the same thing. Take a test tube, a boiling test tube and fill it a half with ice chips. Insert the thermometer gently into the ice taking care that the, its bulb does not touch the walls of the test tube. Note the temperature of the ice, uh, ice it will be 0 degree Celsius. Heat the bottom of the test tube slowly over a flame or by immersing the test tube in a beaker containing hot water and note the temperature after every half a minute till the temperature of the water formed after melting of the ice increases to 30 degree Celsius. 
to plot a graph of temperature against the time we by taking the uh, temperature on y axis and time on the y axis the graph is so obtained is shown in the figure 11.3 uh, this is called as a heating curve of ice so that's why they have taken up to 30 degrees celsius so 30 degrees celsius because experiment ke hisab se 30 degrees celsius yahan tak liya so that is water from the graph it is clear that the temperature of ice remains constant equal to 0 degrees celsius in the part ab so this is the part ab this is a this is b and then this is c till the whole ice melts so till the time the whole ice has not got converted into water there would not be a single degree rise in the temperature okay so the temperature is not going to change till the time there is no change but there, there till the time the change is taking place or the change of phase is taking place the constant temperature at which the ice melts that is 0 degrees celsius is the melting point of ice the heat supplied during this time is being used in melting the ice after this the temperature of water formed by the melted ice begins to rise from 0 degrees celsius to part bc so that is what then the temperature keeps on increasing as the whole conversion of ice to water has got completed change in volume on melting so most of the substances like lead wax etc melt on melt expand on melting but some substances like ice contract on melting for example 1 gram of solid wax of volume 1.161 cm cube on melting at 64 degrees it becomes 1 gram uh molten wax to volume 1.166 on the other hand 1 gram of ice of volume 1.091 cm cube at 0 degrees celsius on melting becomes 1 gram of water or will be volume 1 cm cube on 0 degrees celsius so we know that anonymous behavior of water that when it is going to be cooled from 0 to 4 4 degrees to 0 degrees celsius or it is the uh, ice is being melted so you find that because of the anomalous behavior when the change of water from 4 degrees to 0 degrees took place at that time instead of contracting it expanded and that's why ice jo hai, when it is going to be heated at that time it is going to uh, go, uh, contract so that's why you see that the volume of 1.091 uh, centimeter cube of ice will become one centimeter cube when it is heated so that is why we see that a change in volume and melting in case of ice it will be there will be a decrease in the volume uh, when ice is heated whereas normally well when you heat uh, wax or something it will be the volume will increase because heat always expands now effect of pressure on the melting point now this is very very important the melting point or substance which contract on melting like ice decreases by the increase in pressure for example the melting point ice decreases by 0 0.0072 degree celsius for every one atmospheric rise in pressure on the other hand the melting point of substances like wax lead etc which expands on heating increases by the increase in the pressure so if i am having something like wax or something if i increase the pressure then the melting point will increase but in case of the ice what is happening is because it is the anomalous expansion or because it is the kind of a body which is going to expand or the which is going to contract on heating so when ice is going to be melted to water it contracts and that's the reason when you are applying pressure on ice so what will happen there will be a decrease okay there will be a decrease in the boiling point so with the increase in the pressure there will be a decrease in the boiling point okay so sorry melting point so melting point is going to decrease uh, if there is application of pressure <clears throat> so that is the reason when you are applying pressure on the ice in the though oh, actually kya hota? Okay, wo pressure hone se, there will be a, a melting point will decrease because of the decrease in the melting point to automatically both two ice ko chipka deta hai, okay they, the two ice will get 
stick to that. So when I taking ice and I pray uh, two ice pieces and I place it one another and press it, you will find that on pressing they will be. Now why is that so? Because on pressure the melting point has decreased. So melting point has decreased. Hua. इसलिए क्या हुआ कि उसको एक्चुअली मैंने हीट दिया है बट एक्चुअली वाट इज अपन द हीट हेज बिन फॉर्म एंड देन बिकॉज द मेल्टिंग पॉइंट डिक्रीज दैट्स वाई एट अ लोअर टेम्परेचर इट इज गोइंग टू फ्रीज एंड दैट्स वाई इट इज गोइंग टू बिकम टू पीसेस सो द फ्यूजन ऑफ द टू पीसेस टू आइस पीसेस विल बी टेकिंग प्लेस वे सिमिलरली इज द थिंग वेन द आइस स्केटिंग के टाइम पे यू विल फाइंड दैट आइस स्केटिंग पे जब भी वो लड़की या लड़का जब भी आइस स्केटिंग कर रहे हैं so they will they will never free, uh, keep a complete track or a mark on it why because pressure apply karne se iska melting point is going to decrease so that's why the marks are not formed because on the application pressure it will in fact fuse more so it will become more ice it will not turn to water okay normally kya hona chahiye tha like wax if we take and pressurize it on pressure or applied on the wax the wax will start melting but ice agar humne ne pressure diya to instead of melting it will fuse it was free so that's why because it is having decrease with increase in pressure there is a decrease in the melting point if i am where it is on the melting point now this point was very important and there are many many questions which are asked based on this that koi jaise maine bataya by wax skating the ice tracks tracks nahi bante hain ya do ice ko rakha to it will get fused together so these are the things so you have to just answer one simple thing over here that the melting point of ice decreases okay the melting point of ice decreases with the increase in pre, uh, decreases for with the rise in pressure so if the pressure increases the melting point decreases due to which there is no formation of the water from the ice so if at all impurity is on the melting point the melting point of the substance decreases by the presence of impurity the melting point of ice decreases from 0 degree celsius to minus 22 degree celsius on mixing salt to it in proper proportion this fact is utilized in making the freezing mixture for adding salt by adding salt to the key to the ice the free uh, keep the free uh, the freezing mixture is used in preparing kulfis so you can see that kulfi wala jo bahar rehta hai to he doesn't have a refrigerator but still he is able to keep his kulfi very cold and nice this is because he is going he adds salt to the ice when he adds salt to the ice the the uh, melting point of ice reduces from 0 to minus 22 and because it is reduced to minus 22 so the temperature over there okay agar wahan pe melting ho raha hai so the temperature over there is minus 22 degree celsius hence the kulfi are able to remain in minus 22 degree celsius instead of 0 degree celsius agar sirf ice rakha rehta to kya hota it would be a 0 degree celsius because as you know ये पूरे के पूरे अंदर कितना टेम्परेचर है जीरो है तो मैंने अगर कुल्फी इसमें रखा तो कितना टेम्परेचर है जीरो पर अगर मैंने इसकी आइस के अंदर साथ में सॉल्ट भी डाला है तो व्हाट इज द टेम्परेचर एट व्हिच इज मेल्टिंग माइनस ट्वेंटी टू सो व्हाट इज द कुल्फी एट माइनस ट्वेंटी टू सो दैट इज हाउ दीजिंग मिक्सचर इज फॉर्म बाय आइस एंड सॉल्ट सो वी सी दैट बाय एडिशन ऑफ द इम्प्योरिटीज the melting point is going to decrease so there is a decrease in the melting point by addition of impurities the same thing as pressure pressure increases melting point decreases so way yani jo cheez ek if i taken like 10 kg but 10 atmospheric pressure dala hai to automatically instead of 0 degree it will be 0.072 okay bahut zyada nahi hai but yeah there will be some uh, minus mein chala jayega okay Minus zero point something will be the value of it. Vaporization, boiling, the change from state uh, from liquid uh, to gas or vapor phase on absorption of heat at a constant temperature is called as vaporization. So yeah, vaporization is uh, the change of state from liquid to gas. The particular temperature at which the vaporization occurs is called as boiling point of the. material so similarly the change from vapor to liquid phase on vapor on liberation of heat at a constant temperature is called as condensation or liquefaction and at the particular temperature at which the condensation occurs is called as condensation point of vapor so simple thing is from liquid to gas it is a vaporization and gas to liquid is condensation liquid to gas is boiling point and that is vaporization point 
condensation point. The, for a pure substance, the boiling point and the condensation point will be the same, is identical. Heat energy is absorbed at the constant temperature during vaporization, while the same amount of heat energy is liberated during condensation at that temperature for the same mass of substances. So, yeah, it's the same thing, 100 degree Celsius water, 200 degree Celsius steam. So, that is going to be this way that heat, water to steam, heat is absorbed and steam to water, heat is given out, liberated. So according to the heat curve will be this way that if you see the heat curve, then 100 degrees Celsius is here. So at 100 degrees Celsius, uh, it will be a flat thing like this and then it is going to keep on increasing. The same way in case uh, as in case of, uh, sorry, it is, I made a mistake. Because they are not started at 100, they are stated, taken it from here. So it will be from this side, if you have made it from here, it is going to go from let's say from 30 degrees ye isko le lete to ye idhar tak jayega the 100 and then there will be flattening out of this thing and of course then it will go up also but you are not needed to show that thing because the temperature of the steam will go to increase later on but that is so here it is 30 degree water this is 100 degree water and this is 100 degree steam okay So again the same experiment, take some water at a room temperature at 20 degrees Celsius in the flask and suspend a thermometer in it. Heat the flask by keeping it over a burn and burn, Bunsen burner and note its temperature after every half a minute. Till the water starts boiling and the flask contains vapors. At this stage bubbles are formed uh, th uh, throughout the water. This indicates that boiling occurs throughout the volume of the water. Plot a graph for uh, temperature against time. By taking the temperature on y-axis and time on x-axis, the graph is shown. It is called as the heating curve of water. For graph, from the graph it is observed that initially at A, water is at 20 degrees Celsius room temperature and then when the absorption of the heat energy, the temperature of the water rises continuously in the part AB, where it is uh, in the liquid, liquid phase. At B, the boiling starts and the temperature does not rise further in part B, C, uh, although the heat is being continuously absorbed. So this is part A, this is part B and this is part C. So in B, C, there is no change in the uh, temperature even if the heat was given to them. The part B, C is the, the parallel to the time axis and represent the boiling of the water. The particular temperature, it is 100 degrees Celsius at the point. At the, at the point B is the boiling point of water. Change in volume of the boiling, all liquid expand on boiling. For example, one centimeter cube of water at 100 degrees Celsius becomes 1760 centimeter cube of steam at 100 degrees Celsius. So there's going to be a very drastic change in the volume when it gets converted from liquid to gases. Because gases are going to occupy a lot amount of uh, space. That's why uh, it is going to take a lot of amount of space. Effect of pressure on boiling. The boiling point of a liquid increases with the increase in the pressure and decreases with the decrease in pressure. If the pressure increases, boiling point increases. If the pressure decreases, boiling point also decreases. This is exactly what happens when you are cooking the food at a hilly region. So in a hilly region, you will always find that they will use pressure cookers more effectively. Because if they are trying to boil the water at a higher altitudes, because the pressure is low, therefore the melting point, the boiling point will be low. So the water will start boiling at let's say around 70 degrees Celsius. So if it is boiling at 70 degrees Celsius, then what will happen? The food will not get cooked properly because the 70 degrees Celsius is not enough for the food to get cooked. So that's why you use pressure cooker. What does the pressure cooker do? It will increase the pressure inside. When the pressure increases, the boiling point increases. Boiling point increases automatically more than 100 degrees Celsius pay wo food boil hoga. So that's why pressure cookers are more effective in hilly regions. This is some kind of give reason questions which is normally asked. So the boiling point of the liquid increases with the increase in pressure and decreases with the decrease in pressure. The boiling point, point of pure water at one atmospheric is seven, uh, 760 mm of Hg is 100 degrees Celsius. In a pressure cooker, 
steam is not allowed to escape out in the vapor pressure on water inside the pressure cooker becomes nearly 1.75 times the atmospheric pressure so water boils in it at about 120 to 125 degrees celsius due to the increase in pressure thus cooking of vegetables etc becomes more easier and faster in it since they get sufficient heat energy before the water boils further the cooked material inside it being in a high temperature remains warm for an over a longer period so always cooking it in a cooking in a pressure cooker will be more advantageous to save fuel also and to be faster also and to remain hot also at high altitudes such as hills and mountains the atmospheric pressure is low less than one atmosphere therefore at these places water boils at a temperature lower than 100 degrees celsius so it is not does not provide the required heat energy to it to, uh, for to its contents for cooking thus cooking there becomes very difficult and it takes a much longer time next is the effect of impurities on the boiling point so the boiling point of the liquid increases by the addition of impurities to it if common salt is added to water its boiling point boiling uh, it, uh, it boils at a temperature higher than 100 degrees celsius so with the increase in the impurity there is an increase in the boiling point of the water so water if i am taking water it will boil at 100 degrees celsius but if i take salt water it will boil at higher temperatures than 100 degrees celsius hence we add salt while cooking pulses the salt, the water then provides sufficient heat energy to it its content before boiling and so the cooking becomes easier and faster so normally when you need to cook some food we some add some amount of water a water can the thoda salt dal dete hain so that the boiling point increases so it is able to cook faster we now see the latent heat and specific latent heat one sec i'll just check the timings Okay, I'll continue in the next video.